If you live in Tennessee and end up in front of a judge, that can already be a fearful experience. But if English is not your first language, ending up in front of a judge in court can seem like an impossible task. In this episode, we're going to talk about just that and the services that Tennessee offers to address that very problem. Welcome to Tennessee Court Talk. I'm your host, Nick Morgan, Digital Media Lead at the Administrative Office of the Courts. Sitting down with me today is Ryan Mosier, the Language Access Program Manager here at the AOC. Ryan, welcome to Tennessee Court Talk. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Ryan, I want to start with asking you a little bit about your job here at the AOC and what it provides for Tennesseans. Sure. So the main responsibility of my job is to administer the court interpreting credentialing program under the Tennessee Supreme Court rule. Um, And that's just the program that credentials interpreters in Tennessee um, so they're credentialed and ready to go into court to interpret. I always try to help our listeners understand that a lot of the staff roles here at the AOC fall under the Tennessee Supreme Court rules of procedure. Where does language access fall under the rules and why? So there's two Supreme Court rules for language access. There's Rule 41 and Rule 42. Rule 41 is just the rules of ethics for court interpreters. There's about 12 canons in there that regard ethics and then also have commentary on situations that court interpreters could experience regarding ethics. And then Rule 42 is just our standards for court interpreters. That covers the credentialing program, and then it also covers what services are provided by the AOC. So let's jump into the fundamentals a little bit, being in the courtroom as a language provider. What skills does a court interpreter need to have? So to be a court interpreter, there's really three things that interpreters are tested on, and that's the three modes of interpretation. So there's um, sight translation, simultaneous interpretation, and consecutive interpretation. Sight translation is just a document translation where you go from English into the target language that you're needing. Consecutive interpreting would happen more in just a court setting, back and forth between the defendant and the judge, and it would go back and forth between English and the target language. And then they're simultaneous, and that's probably the most difficult skill for an interpreter is the simultaneous interpreting, and that's just when the interpreter listens to everything in English and translates simultaneously into the target language. Are there any specific skills of court interpreting that someone needs to learn before becoming a court interpreter? I would say just experience in those three modes of interpretation because all three of those modes of interpretation are used in court. A lot of interpreters will go and set in courtrooms and just shadow and kind of learn to see how a court proceeding goes. And then there's YouTube videos and they just kind of really immerse themselves in that target language. How does an interpreter become licensed or state approved in Tennessee? So Tennessee is like most other states in the country. Um, we get all of our testing materials from the National Center for State Courts. They provide testing materials for all, all states. So we're all administering the same exams. But in Tennessee, the first step is to take a 14 hour ethics and skill building workshop. That just talks about the basics of court interpreting in Tennessee. So we offer those all throughout the year and those are done remotely. The next step is to do a written exam. That's a written exam that's in English and it just has synonyms, anonyms, idioms, vocab and court terminology. From there, they'll do oral proficiency interviews and they'll do those in English and their target language. And that is just to test their fluency to make sure they're fluent enough to be in a court setting. From there, they'll do a background check And that's the last step to become a registered interpreter in Tennessee. Certified interpreters, they do all those steps, and then they take a three-part oral exam from the National Center for State Courts. And what's the difference? So certified is the highest designation an interpreter can receive in Tennessee. Registered is that second tier. And then an interpreter who, you know, is fluent but hasn't done any credentialing testing would just be considered a non-credentialed interpreter. So there's kind of three tiers of interpreters in Tennessee. But they could still be in court. They could be. Supreme Court rule lays out that a certified interpreter should be appointed first. And if a certified is not available, then a registered. And if a registered is not available, then a non-credential could be appointed. But that's usually all at the discretion of the judge. So let's say you're assigned an interpreter for your case. Does that interpreter stay with you for the entirety of the case, or can your interpreter change throughout your trial or hearing? It just depends. Interpreters in Tennessee work as independent contractors, so they're called by the courts just when they're needed. Um, So it kind of depends on the interpreter's availability. If you're working with an interpreter and you've got a good relationship with them and your attorney, um, the attorney could choose to use that interpreter throughout the whole whole case. Um, But there could be a time conflict issue and another interpreter is brought in. Is that something that comes to you or is that all dealt with on the trial level? 
Um, so that doesn't come to me. Our office doesn't schedule the interpreters. We just provide a roster of our credentialed interpreters. And then the individual court will reach, will reach out to each interpreter to schedule them. What happens if someone speaks a language that Tennessee doesn't have a language contact for? So there's a lot of times we get a request for a rare language. And Tennessee belongs to the National Center for State Courts Consortium, the Council for Language Access Coordinators. So I belong to a listserv with everyone else in the country that does my job. So we get on that listserv and we ask other states for contacts for those rare languages. And usually in you know larger areas, bigger cities, New York, California, they're gonna have a larger roster than Tennessee does. So we can usually find an interpreter that's out of state to bring them in. Does a defendant or a plaintiff in a trial or a hearing have to pay for their interpreter? No, the AOC and the state covers the cost for all court hearings in Tennessee. Does the AOC provide language services for virtual hearings as well? So with COVID, we started doing a lot of remote hearings, obviously, because people weren't allowed into the courtrooms. Um, So with the use of like Zoom and WebEx, courtrooms really got comfortable using interpreters remotely. I guess that made it easier for people out of state, like interpreters out of state, to help out, right? Right, especially those in those rare languages that are out of state. They could just do a Zoom call and we wouldn't have to you know, bring the interpreter in from another state. What are some of the rare languages that that pop up? Here recently, we've been getting a lot of requests for Mayan dialects. I would say that is our biggest request right now. With 95 counties across the state, I'm sure filling every interpreter request can be a challenge. You did mention that the trial courts handle most of that on their own, but do you feel like there are enough interpreters across the state? It's definitely a challenge to get interpreters in some of the courtrooms. Um, We have more interpreters right now than we've ever had on our roster, but court interpreters are going to multiple counties and courtrooms trying to get things filled, and they're usually scheduled a couple weeks out right now. How does... Is there a form online somewhere for someone to fill out if they're interested to even get started in the process? They're like, hey, I know my other language really well. I'm looking to get into something like that. I think I would like it. The AOC's website, tncourts.gov, if you go to programs and then court interpreters, it's going to have the whole credentialing process laid out on there. It's going to give a little description about all the testing requirements. Ryan, thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, We've known each other for several years now here at the office, and I'm glad we got to sit down and discuss language access today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.